What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Spartan Gamer and yes, we're back with another episode of the Wednesday Watch List, my monthly list feature where we take a look at certain aspects of video games and just kind of talk about them in whatever way that comes to mind. And this month we're doing silly things that gamers do that help no one. And if that doesn't make any sense, uh, basically it's stuff that gamers do here in the physical real world that we believe will impact the game. And now most of the time we know that it doesn't, but it doesn't stop us from doing these things in a vain attempt to either be more immersed in the game or we unconsciously and subconsciously do these things and we just roll with it and then it's really funny when you catch yourself doing it and I'm not saying that everyone does all of these things on these lists I'm saying that we either do one or you have found yourself doing one of these things at some point in your life so ladies and gentlemen let's not waste any more time let's get into this video and I hope that you enjoy because I'm really excited to be talking about this one this one has been one I've been wanting to do for a long while now so yeah Let's get into Entry number one, ladies and gentlemen, mostly happens during racing games or any time you're in a, a vehicle and it involves tilting the control when turning. Now, as I mentioned, I am guilty of doing this many a time and the tighter the turn, the more intense you turn the control. Now, I know you can't see what I'm describing but think of it as you t as you're taking a turn you tilt your control in the direction that you're turning as if you're using the control as a steering wheel essentially now there are some games that use this as a mechanic but trust me if you actually try and use that properly you end up screwing yourself over and you can't play properly now of course it can be gentle as just turning it a little bit or sometimes you even lean your whole body into it. Now my friends and I are guilty of doing this many times especially in Rocket League where we'll even say that we're jumping out of our chairs because of how invested we are and how intense it is but yeah as I mentioned it happens mostly in racing games but it can happen in just other games where you in a vehicle such as Grand Theft Auto while driving or just cause any vehicle. Sometimes it even happens while you're in a boat or a plane, which is fun. And entry number two, and this one is not bound by any genre in particular. It's more uh, one of those that is generic, and it's pressing down really damn hard on the buttons. Whether you're doing an attack such as this, doing a transformation, literally anything that you decide to do you really give the buttons a little bit more vuma you know you want to you want to emulate doing a strong attack so you really press down on those buttons to simulate a power you know you want to do a strike you hold it in and you press it really damn hard now i know it does absolutely nothing in the sense that I could press these buttons as soft as if I was caressing a woman's cheek and the effect would be the exact same. The move would still do the, the, the damage, but that doesn't stop me from still doing it. I say me, but I'm pretty sure all of us do this at some point, as I mentioned, that's the whole bloody point of this. Let's take an example here from Rocket League. You want to chase this ball. You want to get to it. You want to... So you really fall down on the accelerator. You want to boost. You give that circle button a really hearty press I, I can't even begin to really explain it properly but it's you really just give those buttons just a little bit of extra vuma. you want to flip you go down it gives weight some power behind your plays it's I think it's more because we want to feel immersed we do these sorts of things but I, ca I can't begin to explain if you're not one of the people that do this how satisfying it actually feels to really give your buttons a hearty press when you're playing. With video games becoming more and more cinematic and immersive it's almost no surprise that we do a lot of these things but this one ladies and gentlemen is very silly it's involving you sometimes peeking around the corner literally trying to physically move your head and body you're hiding here and you try and instead of just moving your character you lean in or try and 
peek over using your actual body now with VR sure that's a mechanic that's physically possible as I mentioned video games are becoming more advanced and immersive but just in a standard first person shooter you can't see over so you literally do a lean in it's just unbelievable I know for a fact I don't do this one I know I know that but I do move with my body or flinch or that sort of thing but to literally sit here and go oh and try and peek now I know again you can't see what I'm doing but just try and picture this I'm hiding here but I'm leaning out to try and do this instead now this this one like I said is mostly it happens mostly in first person games because you physically can't move the camera to see around like in a third person game you can just move the analog stick and you can look around the camera or the wall but it's mostly with games that have fixed camera angles as in this first person or third person with a fixed angle as I'm gonna show you now. Now remember when I said that there's third person games with fixed camera angles now Hollow Knight's the best example I can provide right now you check I can't I can move the here can make him look up and down right as you can see but I found myself lifting myself or lowering myself down to actually see what he's doing so as the camera moves up I lift my head or I'm leaning in to try and see things off screen because I'm scared so like before looking up I will physically lift my head with the character to now this does this like I mentioned is with fixed camera angles not like your other third person games like take Assassin's Creed where you can move the camera freely around that has nothing to do with entry number four ladies and gentlemen and it has to do with being underwater and more specifically actually holding your breath while your character is under the water regardless of how deep or where it is you will hold your breath you tend to just <gasps> and see how long if you could actually survive with your character while they're doing it now I know for a fact I found myself doing this more as a child uh, especially I tended to be I did these a lot as a kid but every now and again I do actually catch myself doing that and for someone who's especially thalassophobic meaning I'm scared of being underwater and scared of the ocean this is a nightmare whenever I have to go underwater now especially some games they have a breath meter but Ratchet here has an oxygen mask which makes it almost near impossible to actually compete with him while you do this but it's still really funny when you actually catch yourself holding your breath while doing it sometimes it's not even intentional you just happen to be holding your breath at the time and then when you actually surface you <sighs> And it's actually really silly when it happens. Ladies and gentlemen, we've already spoken about the absurdity of s sneaking around and staying crouched down the entire time during stealth sections. And this has nothing to do with that. This, ladies and gentlemen, is about whispering. Literally dropping your voice down while in stealth to avoid the enemy. Now, you can either catch yourself just being really quiet a little bit or literally whispering as if you're scared to alert the enemy to your presence. So it's like when someone's about to see you, it's like, oh shit, 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 and you drop your voice and you start being a bit more careful about what you say. Sometimes you don't even talk at all. I know I've found myself doing that many times where I will not talk during stealth sections because I am literally scared to alert the enemy as to where I am. Now you would think whispering during stealthy sections in a game should not be possible in a game like Monster Hunter because A it's not a stealth game and 2 where the hell is there gonna be time for stealth in a game about hunting big colossi beasts for fun and you'd be very wrong in insanely wrong now of course you might be tracking a monster you might want to get a specific I don't know screenshot of the beast and you can't have the monster seeing you you might just want to observe and of course if you spend too much time the monster gets angry and it's even more stupid when you think you could just pop on the ghillie suit and the monster is none the wise already you are wearing a bunch of leaves in the desert I no problem but yeah literally 
during these type of things, the, the, the entry I'm talking about, like stealthy bits, you could literally have a full-blown orchestra playing right now and the monster would be none the wiser but that doesn't stop you from still whispering and I'm talking not just the monster but enemies in general would be none the wiser even if you had a bloody concert going on in your room. Hell you could be playing this at a film festival at a music festival and these beasts would be none the wiser but nope we will still whisper and hold our breath and hold our voices down to I'm going to use this lightly, avoiding alerting the enemy to our lobby. On the topic of Monster Hunter, ladies and gentlemen, our next entry and the second last for this list is literally saying ow or flinching when you get hurt in video games. You think I'm joking, I do this unironically and you seriously don't believe me. Here's some footage of me doing it while not actually bring mention it. While it's not in my mind, here's some footage. Oh my days, I'm not focusing. I'm playing down now. Ow! Bugger! Oh come on, I hate that it's... I don't know how to negate that. Ow! As you can see, this is not something that I'm just talking nonsense about. This is something I do. And I've seen a lot of people, both in videos that I've watched and like friends of mine, do this. While we're playing, you will literally, as if it does nothing. Like saying it doesn't make it hurt less, but it's because you're feeling with your character. Video games are filled with NPCs, ladies and gentlemen, and that's non-playable characters to those of you that are not down with the lingo. Basically, it's any character that you are not in control of. And with that comes stupid behavior on their part and anger and frustration on ours as gamers. Now, our final entry has to do with us as gamers getting angry and pissed off and shouting at these poor NPCs for things that are out of their control or sometimes is but we still get bloody angry regardless now like I said we get angry we can shout at them and it's and it's it's funny thing it's not like shouting at them is gonna change anything they're not gonna suddenly behave any different if we do get angry at these uh, non-playable characters but nonetheless that doesn't stop us from absolutely tearing them a new one with verbal abuse because of a stupid mistake that they happen to make. Now it's not just NPC characters or companions that you can end up shouting at. I have found myself many a times shouting at my horse in Red Dead Redemption 2 both during the main story and in online. I've shouted stupid horse many times. Now I know it's very mean, especially considering that your horse is probably your best companion in this game, but out of frustration you need to blame somebody. And sometimes yes, it is their fault. Like they get scared from snakes or alligators or any wild animal that's in the area. A predator to them. So it makes sense that they buck you off and run away or you happen to be sprinting, you're going in and you ram straight into the rock. Your fault, you're in control of them. Sorry about that girl, I needed to do that for a point. But you end up blaming them for your mistake. And sometimes it's because you can't see, so you end up uh, doing something stupid and you blame them. Meanwhile, it's not really their fault, but of course, as a gamer, you're never gonna take it. You're always gonna find something or someone else to blame instead of taking responsibility yourself. Come on, now that's natural law of gamers, that it's never your fault, come on. But yeah, blaming your horse in Red Dead, kind of a dickish thing to do, but I have done it. And for that I am sorry, so I end up do feeding her something nice 
to compensate for me being a jackass too. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that was it for our Wednesday watch list for this month. I hope that you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I always look forward to making these each and every month. But more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know if there's anything on this list that I mentioned that you are guilty of. Please let me know in the comments below. But also, let me know is there something that you do that I did not include on this list. I'd like to know if I potentially missed something that some people may do that I didn't include so yeah again let me know down in the bottom in the comments I'd really like to know it's, it's always interesting to keep up with certain things like this but yeah ladies and gentlemen as I said this was it for this one and I've already started planning next month so yeah I'll see you then but as always ladies and gentlemen I hope that you have an amazing day night morning afternoon whatever it is, wherever you are, but my name is Spartan Gamer, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye -bye.